But that was awesome that we got some time to hang out, and we're gonna have plenty of time to hang out uh, uh, when we're done. Isn't that right, Sonia? Right? Nine o'clock, right? We can hang out here all we want, okay? Um, so, uh, again, the last part of this uh, program is about some uh, drilling down into uh, a really specific implementation of uh, State Decoded that Seamus Craft um, and his colleague uh, uh, Chris uh, have, have made. And uh, Seamus, Seamus is going to tell us about that project and how we can all help uh, to move this forward. Ladies and gentlemen, Seamus Craft. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a soft voice gentleman, so if you can't hear me, uh, raise your hand or listen harder. Um, thank you for the introduction. Thank you guys for coming tonight. Uh, we have a good gift for you. Uh, it's actually a re-gift, and we're re-gifting you the law for the internet age. We've got open browsers, open phones, bookmark chicagocode.org, because this is your open law website <coughs> that builds on all of this, that extends the work of these fine public servants here tonight, and the thousands and the thousands and the thousands of city bureaucrats, lawyers, people who've been in court, who've helped produce and maintain the law before the internet. Uh, well, the internet happened, and that's why we're here today. Um, I'm Seamus, I run the Open Gov Foundation. We're a scrappy uh, 501c3 that runs on the soul of a startup. Uh, we came out of Capitol Hill, building legislative collaboration tools. Think Wikipedia for legislation. And it worked. And we wanted to scale and uh, grow that thanks to the Knight Foundation. They gave us money to do that. But when we went to our first place that wasn't Capitol Hill, we found out they had no data. There was nothing for our cool tool to run. And so that's where we come in. Before I go any further, Chris, could you stand up and turn around? And Bill, Bill, you're watching at home. You're on the screen too here, Bill with his cat. Those are the guys that complete the picture, right? So everybody in this room has a piece of the puzzle. There are citizens, we're affected by the law, everybody gets parking tickets. There are lawyers and producers of the law. There are government workers who use it as part of their jobs every day. And then there are civic hackers. And that's the rest of the picture. Bill and Chris have been doing all this hard work. So in just like two or three minutes, I wanna run you through some of that magic that Waldo was referring earlier, and what that looks like for Chicago. So you cannot conceive the many without the one, right? This is the opposite of e pluribus unum. So we're all used to uh, a whole bunch of citizens coming together and creating a country or a city. Um, well, what does that all funnel into? You've seen it tonight. It funnels into the law. The community, the government, everything that it means to be in Chicago as a city is law. It's words on a page, it's text. And this is where we start. So Julie, Julia, excuse me. Julia talked about American Legal. This is American Legal. So this is where we start. You've got a website, it's up there, it's on the internet, it's running off this data. It's somewhat accessible if you know it, what's there to find. But then you heard from Carl and from Waldo some of the awesome stuff that we can do with this information to get it into more hands, to really, like I said, get it back into the owners, which is the people. So we took that and then took the PDFs Carl talked about. So that was the second starting point, right? You turn paper to the internet, the easiest way is the PDF. Now PDFs suck. We all know that's, that as developers, hackers, this is the bane of my existence. But for a very long period of time, it was the best technology available to get that onto the internet. And for some people, it still is the best way to consume information. So we're leaving PDFs, but that's what we start with. Then, ah, now here's some of the magic. Who referred to the magic? Did the magic man leave? Uh, this is what some of that magic looks like. This is the XML state decoded format that the genius Waldo created for the first time. No genius has ever created anything out of XML. <laughs> Touche. Touche. What you're looking at here is literally the structure that you would see if we opened up the binder. Who knows? This might not even be the one. Oh, no, it is. You see structure here. 
Well, we translated that into computer code. It's the same thing. The source code for any community is the law itself. So all we are doing is translating that into a format we communicate with today, which is digitally and the internet. And then boom! After all of that magic happens, Chicago decoded, chicagocode.org. This is the beta version, or the MVG. What was that? The minimal viable gift that we are giving back to the city of Chicago. It's state decoded .6. It works, it's all up there, it's all delicious open data, XML and JSON, uh, but where does this go from here? And that's really why we're here tonight and we're gonna be here tomorrow. This is a thing, right? Chicago is the leader as a city in the country. I think that bears re repeating. Chicago is the leader as a city government for the entire United States. That's really cool. Now, before I go any further, I gave you guys a gift here at the outset with the URL, chicagocode.org. You need to give me a gift here. I want everybody to wave here for a second, please. Wave at me, everybody in the room. Come on, come on, come on. Beautiful, thank you. I can then take that back to other cities and show that there are people in Chicago from the city government, from American Legal, from user groups, citizens, civic hackers who care enough to get this off the ground and work. Because as you heard from Carl, as you heard from Julia, and as you heard from Waldo, there are some significant barriers. There's a reason why the law is inaccessible in a lot of places today. Many of those reasons are very good, but what we're trying to do, me, Chris, and Bill, is to take the magic that's happening here with chicagocode.org and with you guys in this city and spread it like the Pied Piper around America. And you guys waving is going to be the first thing that I show people when I walk into the room. Because there are people like you in every city. They just don't have the tools. So we got Virginia Code, Florida, Maryland, Baltimore, San Francisco, Philly, Chicago. Those are all out there being used. In progress, LA, Missouri, Boston, the United States of America, New York, Texas, Colorado, Denver, Las Vegas, Iowa, California. These are all in process and coming soon. This is the literal upgrade of all of the laws in the United States so that developers, some of whom are in the room, can do whatever the hell you want with that data, incorporate it into your apps. Uh, and so that folks within the government and the legal community who use the law in these cities now have a website that works just as well as Google for that information that was locked in paper or locked in that box. So this is that one, this is the 0.8 version that Waldo talked about. I'd like to show it off how pretty it is. You saw where Chicago started, right? So this is the 0.6 version, chicagocode.org. And then Waldo made it way sexier. Like this, this is starting to look like a modern website you might actually visit and might actually get something out of, right? This is the iterative development process of the state decoded and of law today. Now what's next? Neighboring, right? We live in Cook County, or you guys live in Cook County. So we've just got the laws of the city, and the rules of the city up there. Well, what if the county law is involved? You're covered by both. The state of Illinois is a third. The United States of America is a fourth. And there are many more in between there. All of that getting into the same format is what we're doing so that it can all play together and operate seamlessly like everybody expects information to today. What's next? Get it into this, the civic bloodstream. Who uses the law in Chicago? Who are the users? What do those users need? Where are the integration opportunities? And how can this improve Chicagoans' daily lives? And that's where I think I'm going to end here. Um, Dan? You guys are lucky to have Dan, because he gives it you know what. And he also goes around the country bragging. But when he comes into all of those tech conferences and all of the people that come in just thinking zeros and ones, is that the whole point of all this stuff is people's daily lives. There, there are folks out there who need legal assistance, who can't afford it. OK, we're presenting the law to them, or presenting it to folks who can simply link to it, right? Our first users. Uh, our legal assistance firms who work with poor people, who work with folks who can't get a lawyer. They spend all of their day messing with PDFs, messing with big binders of the law. And that's where it matters, right? Everything we've talked about today to this point has been pretty damn academic. 
The clerk's office, they're doing all right. You know, we, we're doing all right. But the people who really need this stuff on the front lines aren't. And that, the ability to text a link to a client whose kid might have just been arrested, that's where we're going to. Now, we don't know how we're going to get there, um, but that's why we're sort of re-gifting, roping you all in to that <laughs> process moving forward. So you see the minimal viable product. We're going to get it up to the 0.8 version, that sexy blue version that you saw for Baltimore that Waldo's doing. But then it's really going to be our shared responsibility to change the way that government works, but change the way that government produces its most important data set, which is the municipal code. Thank you.